So the first person is uh, Daniel Noakes. Daniel, stand up. Okay. Daniel studied, uh, he's in the Space Resource Division. He studied environmental science and environmental engineering at UCLA. The senior project was to perform an analysis of hazardous materials spilled in California with a focus on oil and gas production. Uh, he's worked also in asbestos, lead, and mold uh, in the business community as a consultant, and we're very happy to have him uh, joining the district staff, so welcome. Thank you. And then Cheryl Davis. Okay. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, uh, Cheryl graduated from UC Riverside. She's working in the uh, Station Resources Division with a, a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science with a focus on air quality. Uh, she assisted in the initial installation of PM 2.5 monitoring stations in Great Basin, uh, ABCD. Uh, she worked in South Coast as an inspector on their energy and refinery team. And we are very happy, and she also worked in private industry and consulting for over 15 years, supporting and obtaining industry and obtaining and, and uh, complying with air, per and air permits. And we're very happy to have such an experienced person coming to our staff. And she yeah, has people that can hit the ground running in. Welcome to the district, Cheryl. And then Ashley Reynolds. Here we go. Ashley is in Mobile Sources. Uh, she is originally from the Sacramento region and graduated from UC Davis with a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences and minored in Sociology. Uh, she worked a couple of years in the restaurant management field and then decided to travel to Europe. Once she returned to California, she worked for Orange County Environmental Health as a registered environmental health specialist. Uh, she's excited to be back in Sacramento, closer to her family, and she's currently working, as I said, in the mobile source field operations section. So welcome. And next is Ryan Nishiraven. Hi, Ryan. Uh, Ryan is a first-generation Iranian-American native to Sacramento. He graduated from uh, CSU, Sacramento. The board members are always happy. Wow. Yes, <laughs> Uh, in 2016, with a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies, uh, his undergraduate thesis was on the feasibility of converting organic waste to energy. As a Sac State undergraduate, he interned with Mobile Source Field Operations Division section. This is another example of one of our interns from the, youth, from the uh, uh, area from the universities coming and staying in the district and working here. So we're very happy to have him here. Uh, he is an uh, avid movie goer and a self-proclaimed critic. So we'll have to <laughs> come to hear about the paper come up. So welcome to the district, Ryan. And then Emily. Emily Goldhahn. She is a controller. Uh, she worked for Robinson & Campbell CPAs for over 15 years, finishing as their audit department manager. She took a five-year break during her time at Robinson & Campbell to work in the wine business. So we needed to ask for recommendations. Prior to joining the district, Emily was the assistant controller for the Rural Community Assistance Corporation. <coughs> she has a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration for the University of Montana at Montana Tech. And she has her CPA. So we're very happy to have her on board. Thank you. Okay. And then Charles. Charles Wilmoth from my home state of North Carolina. <laughs> and Charlotte. Uh, Charles has a long career in information technology, previously working with Sherry's Berries as senior manager IT and application development, Farm Fresh to You as IT director, and most recently at SMUD as a business relations manager. He holds a bachelor's in computer science from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte and a master's degree in business administration from the University of Phoenix. Welcome, Charles. So you can see that we've, we've really brought in some great, great staff people, and we're really excited about having them here. Uh, the only other things I wanted to mention was, first of all, uh, Cap to Cap. I know we have a couple of board members that will be going to Cap to Cap as part of the air quality team. Uh, Cap to Cap this year is the first to third of May. It falls at the same time a National Air Association meeting is being held. But fortunately, they're both in DC. 
which is going to be an interesting. And I, I know that the cap to cap trip will be very interesting this year. The air team is already working on developing our package, and it will change a bit as the new administration has changed. Um, I just wanted to mention to the board that we are tracking events in Washington as closely as we can, uh, as, we, as we are able. I'm going this weekend to our National Air Association Winter Board Meeting in Memphis, and we will hopefully get some more information as to what's going on. We heard last week that, that, were, that the new administration was going to freeze grants coming out of EPA. Then we got some clarification that that wasn't for state and local grants. So we have a million dollars coming for our monitoring programs from them every year. So it's very important that we continue to run those programs here in Sacramento. And uh, we think that those are safe, but we'll have to see what the other funding streams. I'm sure there's going to be changes there. And uh, uh, the cap to cap team uh, was there last Friday where we had all the team leaders talking about their programs. And I can tell you that this is going to be probably the most exciting cap to cap trip. Or interesting in whatever way is interesting turns out to be. Uh, it's not always a good Very thing. Very diplomatic. To be, yes, to be have interesting times. Uh, but we, and it, it's the un, un, unknowing what's happening in D.C. right now, the changes. But it's also the fact that... I thought it slipped into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> in some books it has. Well, if you want to know, just watch the 4 a.m. tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I, I confess that I have turned off, off of... I, I watch NPR that there are times when I just turn in PR because I can't listen to things anymore. Howard Stern's great. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I can say that we will be much more engaged with the Senate and the House this time. Uh, it's been years since they've been relevant to what's going on in D.C. because of the gridlock. I think that I think that it's going to I think it's going to happen here. There hasn't been many bills passed, so when we go back on Cap and Cap, we go and meet with agencies. We meet with the executive <coughs> delegation. This year, we're going to be meeting with the, the committees, chairs minority and majority in both houses. So we're now much more focused on the House and, and the Senate than we have been in many years. So that's everything that I have. So um, thank you, Larry. I wanted to take a second as well, uh, since uh, you didn't have a chance to welcome your <coughs> lead. I think this is the first full board meeting that you've been able to attend in your new capacity. Welcome. And uh, Supervisor Frost, congratulations on your changing of chairs <laughs> and uh, still wearing great shoes. Um, <laughs> despite what Director Daniel said about it. I no, they're great. I just uh, <laughs> uh, some of us here at the district conspired to nominate Larry for an award, a national award, the S. Smith Griswold Outstanding Air Pollution Control Official Award and that's granted by the Air and Waste Management Association. Uh, Larry got nominations from uh, the National Association of Clean Air Agencies, from CAPCOA, which was the California Air Pollution Control Aid Officers, and um, uh, from the board chair as well. And so it's a huge national honor. It's gonna be awarded in Pittsburgh later this year. And I just wanted to, on behalf of the board, congratulate you, Larry. It's well deserved. Oh, thank you. And it's a, well done. Thank you. It's a big honor. I appreciate that very much. Madam Clerk. Uh, the consent calendar, item 311. Do I hear a motion or question? So moved. Second. Second. Do we have a motion from uh, Vice Chair Terry, and I heard a second from uh, Director Guerra. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, motion passes unanimously. All right, Madam Clerk, next item. All good things must come to an end. Um, I'd, I'd like to just uh, take the chair's prerogative to uh, nominate my vice chair, who's done a great job in this capacity to be chair um, uh, for the next two years. And uh, I'd entertain motions for the vice chair nomination. Sorry. Mr. Chair, I'd like to. Uh, nominate uh, Council Member Gary Garrett and let me preface that a little bit. I, I know that uh, we have a, um, a standing rotation of, of city and county here on this board. As we, you know, it's similar to other boards and commissions that we serve on that we uh, that we understand that and uh, follow that rotation. Um, however, I know that uh, Supervisor Kenny and myself um, um, and 
to are certainly very busy these days with a lot of other assignments. Um, and I've also spoken to my <coughs> colleague here, Kira, um, frequently about the importance of uh, air quality, not just to uh, his district, District 6, and uh, in the city, as it relates to kind of his overall agenda and focus on environmental concerns, mm -hmm. uh, but to the whole city of Sacramento. So I'd like to suggest we entertain going out of order and uh, I'd like to nominate uh, my good friend and council member Rick Baird here. I'll second that. All right. Accept it. Do you accept I do. Did you accept the chairwoman? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> um, any, I made that any, any other <laughs> nominations or discussion? No. Um, uh, Supervisor, was that motion inclusive of uh, making Mr. Terry the chair? It is. Okay. And then uh, before we vote, I want to, um, as a past uh, chair, thank you for your services as chair. You've done an outstanding job, and I think um, you've taken uh, a real opportunity to lead this uh, organization uh, where it needs to be led in terms of uh, our commitment to um, our constituents on the air quality front and the greenhouse gas reduction front. Certainly appreciate your service. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great team to be part of. Um, remind me who the second was for the motion. Me. Oh, okay, great. You want to second your own nomination? I thought it was just seconding his. <laughs> motion? No. Second. There you second. go. Thank you. <laughs> Humility will come eventually. <laughs> so we have a motion from Supervisor Cerna, a second from uh, Director Kennedy to make Donald Terry the chair, Director Terry the chair, and uh, Director Guerra the vice chair. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? abstain all right congratulations guys very good yeah. thank you for your forthcoming <coughs> service i offered to turn the chairmanship over immediately but um he uh, next has thing. not accepted that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, madam clerk the next item please <coughs> appointment of board member to stand committee of the board and announcement of the hearing board vacancy Good morning, uh, Chair Hansen and directors. My name is Jamel Moons. I'm the Administrative Services Division Manager here at the district. This item before you is pertaining to the two standing committees that serve this board, and there's really uh, four actions, but they're pretty concise. The first one is to uh, rename the committees to simplify it and more accurately reflect what they do. And two is to make the terms two-year terms consistent with the term of the board chair and vice chair. <coughs> And third is to go ahead and appoint the members to those committees. So the first committee is uh, the Budget and Personnel Committee, and we're just suggesting instead of calling that subcommittee and some extraneous wording that we just call it personnel, Budget and Personnel Committee. And for the hearing board, we have a hearing board here uh, that needs nominations to positions on that hearing board. And previously it said selection, and they actually don't select, they just filter through, and this board as a whole uh, actually appoints. So to correct that naming, and then just to call it a committee. So that's the first recommendation. The second one is in practice, the personnel and, and budget, uh, budget and personnel committee has served generally pretty consistent terms, um, stable with the with the board chair. So each year we've been bringing it back to renominate that committee. So we're just suggesting that that become two year consistent rather than bringing that uh, committee back each year, as well as the hearing board. Um, also, the recruitments sometimes transition over you know one year to the next year. So that provides a little more consistency over the two year term. So that's why that is being recommended. So if those are to be, um, those are the first two actions. The third action is to name additional members to the personnel, the budget and personnel, I keep wanting to say personnel first, the budget and personnel committee. <coughs> the uh, practice is to have the chair, the vice chair and the past chair serve on that committee as well as two additional members from the board. So we need nominations for those two additional members. So that would be a, a separate action. And then, um, uh, uh, a, a vote of board to appoint those. And then the <coughs> last uh, board is the hearing board. And the hearing board through our rules and procedures is that the chair uh, serves on that committee and appoints two, selects two members to serve on that. And then the board just confirms those appointments. So those are the, the four actions that are before the board at this time. Could you give a little bit more information, especially for the new members, you know what the hearing board does? Sure, I would, chair. I would like to pass that chair to Kathy Gitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the hearing board, <laughs> the hearing board is a five-member review board. They hear um, variance application petitions. So if uh, a facility can't meet any of its permit conditions and needs time to come into compliance, they can apply for a variance and be granted a variance. Um, they hear appeal. They hear abatement order uh, petitions, which is when the staff is having an issue enforcing against a facility. Um, we can come to the hearing board for an abatement order, ordering them to shut down or comply with our requirements. Um, they hear appeals of permit decisions by the APCO. Um, they also hear appeals of emission reduction credit decisions. If you're not familiar with emission reduction credits, that's when a facility has been permitted to emit at a certain level for a period of time, well, just has been permitted to emit in the past and they reduce their, redu their emissions, they're entitled in some instances to bank those um, reductions and they have a market value. Um, so we, the district staff, decide whether to grant or deny the emission reduction credit if the um, individual or the facility disagrees with that determination if their reduction credits are denied or they're not given as many as they think they're justified to have. Um, then they can appeal that decision to the hearing board. Great. Do you have any more background? No, unless there are more questions. I would just like to recognize, this is Kathy Pitter. This is district council for those new members who may not know. Yeah, the, yes. the new members, the new but, members. <laughs> yeah, she keeps us. And I would say that hearing boards are established in state law, just like the district. Every district has a hearing board according to state law. So you're you're required to appoint a hearing board uh, for the district. There, it's our hearing board meets what about once a month, maybe throughout the year, Kathy. If that, yeah, we, if, if that it varies so a lot. Our hearing board is not very, is not tremendously busy. Other districts, South Coast hearing board meets constantly. So it just depends on where you are and how much business you have. So it's not real, real honest. So we have uh, uh, several actions, but uh, importantly, uh, board members. <coughs>